Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lessons and Carols. Um, my name is Becca, and I'm a junior at the University of Michigan, and I'm the music intern this year at St. Mary's. Um, I'm very glad that you're all able to join us tonight. I know the format is a bit different than in previous years, but I'm very excited that we're still able to do Lessons and Carols, and I just want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, as some of you may know, Lessons and Carols is a tradition in the church that in its current form dates back to 1918, when it was done for the first time at King's College in London. And ever since that has become very popular and it has been done at church services throughout the world during the Advent and Christmas seasons. Um, through our six lessons and eight carols, we will tell the story of salvation throughout the Bible, starting with the fall of man to the birth of Christ and ultimately ending with gr the Great Commission from Jesus. Um, our carols will be a combination of a cappella singing, duets, and various instrumentation. And um, they will all be done by students and parishioners from our parish. Um, before we get started, uh, just a few logistical things. Uh, you should all be muted right now, and we ask that you please keep your mics muted the entire time. That will just help prevent any feedback from coming through to interfere with the readers or the singers. Um, but as long as your mics are muted, we do encourage that you sing along during the songs. Um, we will have a presentation that we'll share in a moment, and that will include the sheet music for all the songs we'll be doing, so you can follow along with that. Um, we will also share that in the chat as well, if you'd like to download it to follow along yourself. So I will share that and get started. We gather here to recall the mystery of our redemption. Though sin drew us away from God, he never stopped loving us. The prophets told of the coming of a Messiah who would initiate a reign of justice and peace. This promise was fulfilled in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Let us now reflect with joy on this wondrous mystery. Thank you. 
Now the snake was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He asked the woman, did God really say you shall not eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the snake, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it or else you will die. But the snake said to the woman, you certainly will not die. God knows well that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and the tree was desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked so they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God walking about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God then called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then God asked, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat? The man replied, the woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, what is this you have done? The woman answered, the snake tricked me, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the snake, because you have done this, cursed are you among all the animals tame or wild. On your belly you shall crawl, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity be between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. They will strike at your head while you strike at the heel. Lord of mercy, despite our sinfulness, you never stopped loving us. Fill our hearts with your mercy that we may forgive others.
But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide fairly for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Together their young shall lie down. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the viper's den and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. They shall not harm or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the peoples, him the nations will seek out. His dwelling shall be glorious. Lord, we wait for the day of your peace. May we help to bring this peace in our families, our communities, and our world. Thank mm -hmm. you.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Lord, you asked Joseph and Mary to trust in you. May we come to share in their trust and always rely on you. In those, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee 
from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. Lord, you came to us in humility and vulnerability. May we always show loving care to those around us, especially those in most need.
When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, In you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen as, at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. Lord, you are the giver of all good gifts. May we always remember to share our gifts with others for the glory of your name.
the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Lord, you call us to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth. Fill our words with power that we may proclaim your good news and draw all people to you. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. He sent his only son to us that we may be saved from our own sins. He became like us so that we may have hope of someday being united with him in heaven. God saw the state of the world, of those living in darkness and anguish, of those facing injustice, cast out by society, of those living in sin, and chose to send them a savior. What greater gift could there be? What greater sign of love is there than such ultimate sacrifice? It is sometimes hard to understand how God could love us so much, but that is because God's love for us goes deeper than anything we can comprehend. It is something that we do not deserve and cannot earn, yet he willingly, unconditionally. With his love given to us through the birth of his son, Jesus, he brings peace, justice, hope, and salvation. During Advent, we remember that it is through his love and light that we are brought out of the darkness we dwell in. And Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, agreed to bear this light of the world. Though scared and uncertain, she said yes to God's request, fully trusting in his plan for her. She did not know the hardship this would bring, but said yes. Yes to traveling through the night, only to be unwelcome at an inn and forced to give birth in a stable. Yes to grieving the death of her beloved son on the cross. Yes to the full responsibility of being the mother of God. And she did so with grace. 
This unwavering faith and trust in the Lord is what God wants from all of us. Like Mary, we are asked to put our faith in God and to believe that he will not forsake us. During Advent, we are called to wait for God in hope, trusting as Mary did, that he will bring light to our lives, especially where we need it most. And as Jesus sent his disciples out into the world, he commanded them to spread the gospel to others, that they too might have salvation in Christ. To follow Christ and live in his image is to be Christ to others, to bring the peace and love and justice of the Lord to those we encounter every day. During Advent, let us not only be reminded of the goodness Jesus brought into the world, but also the same goodness we are called to bring to others in his name. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. He sent his only son to us that we may be saved from our own sins. As we await his arrival this Advent, we remember this blessing and we reflect on the hope, love, and light that awaits us in the Lord. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to all of our musicians for tonight. You all did a fantastic job. I'm very grateful for your talents and that you all shared them with us tonight. And I'm sure everyone else is as well. So thank you very much for that. And thank you everyone else for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you all have a great Advent season. Thank you all very much. Great job. <laughs>